Today, we'll explore happiness data and uncover seven compelling reasons why scatter plots are indispensable for data analysis. You learn about whether money can actually make you happy, how wealth has changed in the USA, Germany, India and Venezuela of the past 20 years, whether happy people live longer and much more. The results might surprise you. The first reason scatter plots are useful is that scatter plots show the relationship between two continuous variables. For instance, let's take the freely available world's happiness dataset and generate a scatter plot illustrating the relationship between happiness and wealth. After loading packages and data and renaming some variables for our convenience, we can create this scatter plot by employing the ggplot function. This function requires two arguments, the data and the aesthetics mappings. These aesthetic mappings determine the variables to be mapped on the x and y axis of the plot. Lastly, we'll utilize the geompoint function to display points that connect wealth on the x axis and happiness on the y axis. This scatter plot reveals that wealth has a positive relationship with happiness. The wealthier people get, the happier they seem to be. So all those memes about money doesn't make you happy are only true if you don't have any money. The only problem with this plot is that some countries clearly stand out from the trend. This brings us to the second obvious advantage of using scatter plots. They help to identify outliers immediately. Outliers are data points that significantly differ from the rest of the data. These outliers may represent errors or anomalies in the data, unusual events, or even interesting findings. In any case, they can skew our results, so it's important to clearly identify them. And there is a simple way to achieve that by making the scatter plot interactive. For that, we'll load the plot library. Group our data by country inside of aesthetics so that the country will be displayed on the plot and wrap our plot inside of ggplotly command. Here we can identify countries with both low wealth and low happiness scores, such as Central African Republic or Burundi, as well as the happiest and wealthiest countries like Luxembourg and Switzerland. But the most interesting countries are the outliers, such as happy countries with not much money, like Venezuela. However, this plot has two issues. Firstly, it appears quite crowded. And secondly, it fails to indicate whether this relationship changes over time. This brings us to the third reason why scatter plots are useful, their capability to identify patterns and trends over time, commonly known as time series analysis. To declutter our plot, let's focus on just a few countries. The US, Germany, India and for fun Venezuela, since it was standing out as an interesting outlier. We'll explore whether the wealth of these countries has changed over time. To do this, we only need to add one more argument to the aesthetic mappings, namely color. And voila! The plot reveals that India has experienced the highest GDP per capita growth in the last 20 years, while the wealth of the US and Germany has seen minimal increases. These three trends are quite neat and linear, allowing us to make short-term predictions about the future of these countries. However, the wealth dynamics of Venezuela are much more dramatic and far from linear. This leads us to the fourth reason why scatter plots are useful. They help us assess linearity in our data. Assessing linearity is crucial for selecting appropriate statistical model. For example, if we were to apply a classic linear model in some statistical software without examining the scatter plot, we might mistakenly conclude that Venezuela's wealth rapidly declined over the past 20 years. However, when we use a non-linear model, which is the default inside the geom smooth function, that's why we don't need to specify anything inside, 
we realize that there are actually two linear trends. One depicts linear growth from 2005 to 2012, and the other illustrates a linear decline after 2012. These two trends separate data into two clear distinct groups, which, if overlooked, may lead to opposite results. This brings us to the next advantage this plot offer, recognizing clusters within data. The significance of paying attention to grouping patterns is best explained by Simpson's paradox. Simpson's paradox is a statistical phenomenon where a trend may initially appear within individual data groups, but disappears or even reverses when these groups are combined. To enhance the distinction between these groups visually, you can make use of the stat ellipse function. In our example, the overall trend shows that happiness increases with life expectancy. However, as we delve into these trends within groups, we see that happiness increases only for Americans and Venezuelans. For Germans, the trend disappears, and they remain similarly happy regardless of life expectancy. In the case of Indians, the longer they live, the less happy they become. If you have any insights why this might be the case, please share your thoughts in the comments below. This genuinely puzzles me. Now, since Scholar provided completely new information to our two-dimensional plot, we can see color argument as a third dimension. Similarly, we can introduce five additional dimensions, which will transfer a simple scatter plot into a captivating narrative. Think of it as a form of multivariate exploratory analysis, but without the complexity of hardcore statistics. And here is how we do it. To incorporate first three additional dimensions, we will start by adding the shape and size arguments to the aesthetic settings, along with the already existing color. Then we'll add years as labels for each plot using the geom label repel function from the ggrepel package. Here we can use max overlaps argument to reduce the overlapping of labels. The third dimension, shape, now represents different countries. The dimension of wealth, which is represented by size, underscores that Venezuela undergoes the most significant fluctuations in wealth between years, while other countries maintain relatively consistent wealth levels over time. In terms of the perception of corruption, indicated by the blue color, where darker shades represent less corruption, Germans tend to believe that corruption in government and business is not a significant issue, especially in recent years. Interestingly, in years before 2012, when Germans perceived more corruption, both the happiness score and life expectancy were lower compared to later years, when they became more relaxed about corruption and became happier. In contrast, both Indians and Venezuelans became less happy after 2015. Interestingly, both of these groups believe that politicians and businesses in their countries are corrupt. However, it's intriguing to note that while Venezuelans react similarly to Germans, associating more corruption with lower happiness, the opposite seems to be true in India. In India, darker colors indicating lower perceived corruption, correspond to lower happiness scores and higher life expectancy. Once again, India represents a unique pattern in this regard, and I'm intrigued by the reasons behind this. To introduce two more dimensions, we'll start by categorizing the social support and generosity variables. We'll divide them based on whether they fall below or above the median. For social support, which signifies having someone to rely on in times of need, such as relatives or friends, will categorize individual points as either lonely or those who have loved ones. As for generosity, which pertains to donating money to a charity in the past month, will classify individual points as either greedy or generous. To visualize these two categorical variables as two additional dimensions of information, we'll use the facet grid or facet wrap functions. 
This will generate four distinct subplots, each representing different combinations of these categorical variables. Additionally, the position jitta argument inside of the geom point function will help reduce the overlapping of points. This adds an even more intriguing layer to our story. Specifically, only the Germans appear in every subplot. What's the common thread? Well, it turns out that the most Germans have someone they can rely on in times of trouble. However, when it comes to generosity, they are split run down the middle, with half of them displaying in generous spirit and the other half leaning toward thriftiness. Having spent half of my life in Germany, I can certainly relate to this. As for Americans, there are no individuals classified as both greedy and lonely at the same time. In fact, most US citizens are happy and generous. In contrast, the majority of Venezuelans are categorized as greedy. And there are no generous Venezuelans who have someone they can rely on, indicating a lack of trust and economical troubles in the country. Interestingly though, two data points where Venezuelans are generous coincide with low wealth, which simply means if you are generous, you will have less money. And then there is India. The data suggests that many Indians fall into the lonely category, lacking someone they can truly rely on in times of need. This is very surprising, especially considering that India has recently become the most populated country. These patterns paint a fascinating picture, raising many questions about culture, societal values, and the complex relationship between wealth, generosity, corruption, and social support. With the inclusion of eight variables instead of just two, what started as a simple scatter plot has transformed into the multidimensional exploratory machine, offering deeper insights from complex datasets. I personally find it fascinating, but I'd like to hear what you guys think, so definitely let me know in the comments section below. Before we delve into the seventh and final advantage of scatter plots, let me demonstrate a quick way to enhance the appearance of your plot. To begin with, you can control the appearance of the regression line. You can make it dashed, change its color, or eliminate confidence intervals. Titles, captions, and access labels are easily customizable via lapse command. You can manually adjust shapes, colors, sizes, and more. The theme argument provides extensive customization options. For me, the most valuable ones include the ability to position the legend and specify colors, sizes, and fonts for titles, captions, and access. What's even more exciting is that you can easily transform your plot's overall design by applying pre-designed themes. For example, you can utilize the Cleveland theme from the GGPuber package. Additionally, incorporating horizontal or vertical lines can effectively highlight significant thresholds. I understand that this plot may appear crowded and overwhelming, but the good news is you won't often need all these options at the same time, but you'll find them valuable for different projects. Here, I just showed what's possible to include in a scatter plot, but it's your choice to decide which elements to use. Finally, once you are satisfied with your visualization, you can save it using the ggsave command in your preferred format, quality, and size. And if you are satisfied with this video so far, please consider hitting a like button. It helps the channel a lot. Finally, any scatter plot with correlation lines should answer the question of whether this correlation is statistically significant. And if you want to learn how to create such plot with all the statistical details in just one single line of code, and how to interpret all these numbers, be sure to check out my video on correlation.